Did you ever experience an unexpected breakdown? Such events can be not only annoying, but also expensive. Equipment downtime often leads to loss of production and getting up and running again requires corrective maintenance. One way of avoiding unexpected breakdowns is to perform preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance is performed at scheduled intervals. However, it does not consider the specific operating conditions. Condition-based maintenance is a superior solution, as it considers the actual operating condition of the equipment. Condition monitoring observes specific parameters, for example, vibration. In time, these parameters degrade. The earliest sign of degradation is the potential failure. The fault develops in time until the functional failure. Condition-based maintenance means that maintenance can be performed before functional failure, so that unwanted downtime is avoided. This allows also for a better planning of the maintenance work and spare parts. Danfoss Drives has developed a unique functionality that enables the variable speed drive to be used for permanent condition monitoring, without the need of additional expensive equipment. Edge computing and intelligent functions make this tool easy to use in the hands of maintenance technicians, creating value to the end users. To make things easier to understand, we will use a demonstration setup. A VLT drive is used to control the speed of a motor that is driving a pump, which pumps water in a closed circuit. The setup can simulate various faults. This switch can be used to create a turn-to-turn -turn fault in the motor winding. And this handle will lift the motor mounting plate and create a misalignment, leading to increased vibration level. Finally, this valve can reduce the water flow, simulating a change in the load of the pump. There are two easy ways to enable condition-based monitoring in the drive. The simple one is to use Easy CBM. This can be activated from the local control panel through the Smart Start menu. You will be guided through a basic configuration of the condition-based monitoring function. If you need to make more adjustments, the more advanced solution is to use the MCT10 software tool. This has a user-friendly CBM plugin with a graphical interface where you can visualize the baseline and threshold values. It allows you to adjust the CBM warnings and alarms to the specific needs of the application. There are three steps to use CBM. The first step is to establish the baseline. During the baseline phase, data about the actual operation conditions of the application is collected within the user-defined speed range. The drive learns the baseline without any intervention from the user. The second step is to establish the threshold values. These are based on the baseline data. There are two warning thresholds, warning 1, representing an incipient fault, and warning 2, representing a developing fault. There is also an alarm threshold which indicates at which level the operating should stop. Using the alarm level is optional. The third step is the actual monitoring. During this phase, the actual condition is compared to the thresholds. If the measured value exceeds a threshold, then a warning or alarm is activated. You can use the MCT10 tool for setting up condition-based monitoring. There is no need to think about parameters, the setup can be made from the intuitive condition-based monitoring plugin. The first two menu items are used for creating the baseline. This collects the operating conditions of the application. In the Edit Threshold menu you can configure the thresholds which are based on the baseline measurements. You can set the level of the threshold, the reaction time and some other statistical settings. Many settings are inspired for the ISO 10816 standard for vibration measurement. The monitoring menu is used for activating the individual condition monitoring functions and for visualizing the actual operating values compared to the thresholds. The advantage of using the MCT10 is the ability to visualize data. For example, the baseline measurements across the defined speed range can be seen, and potential problems and resonances can be easily identified. For the baseline four points are displayed, representing the minimum, maximum, mean and mean plus minus three standard deviation values. In the threshold menu it is easy to see where are the thresholds in comparison with the baseline values. The same applies to the monitoring menu, where additionally the actual operating point can be seen. There are two ways to establish the baseline, either through a baseline run, where the drive sweeps through a defined speed range, or an online baseline where the drive collects data during normal operation. If online baseline is selected then you start with defining the speed range in which CBM will be active. Afterwards, you select the duration of the baseline learning process. The learning happens while the drive is running normally in the application. The duration can be set from hours up to several months. For example, let's select one week. 
The next step is to configure the vibration sensor. Once this is done, you are ready to run the drive. For demonstration purpose, let's use the baseline run. We start by defining the speed range where we want to perform condition monitoring. This range will be divided in 20 steps. We can set the duration of the baseline measurement. A longer duration will usually provide better results. The next step is to tell the drive which sensors are connected. Please note that the winding monitoring and load envelope monitoring functions don't need any external sensors. Only vibration needs an external sensor. We will now set a sensor 1 to analog input 54. We need to set the scaling of the sensor, which can be found either written on the sensor or in the sensor datasheet. In our case we have a 4 to 20 milliamp vibration sensor with the measurement range of 0 to 25 millimeter per second. After setting up the sensors you are ready to run the baseline. Push hand on and the drive will start running through the 20 speed steps. A progress bar is shown on the LCP and in the MCT10CBM plugin. Once the baseline is finished, the motor will stop and you are ready to set the threshold values. Please note that this sequence is used for the ease of understanding. In practice, once you have a good understanding of your application, you can make the threshold setting before running the baseline. The baseline is now finished and you can visualize the data. The data is available for the stator winding, load envelope and vibration monitoring functions. You can easily identify resonance points. At the speed values where resonance occurs, the four points have more spreading. If you are satisfied with the baseline data, you can generate the thresholds. The functions are pre-configured with default values. In most cases it is enough to click on generate for all functions. Congratulations! You have now generated the thresholds and are ready for running the application and monitoring the condition. We will now start the drive and simulate some faults, to see how CBM works. A small green cross indicates the actual value of the monitored parameter. Let's start with a turn-to-turn -turn winding fault, simulating an incipient winding isolation fault. The motor keeps running but the drive detects an increase of the stator winding fault signature and will display a warning message. Once the fault is removed the warning will disappear. Now let's check out the load envelope monitoring function. The valve reduces the water flow through the pipe, thus reducing the load. This can be seen on the graph. The drive displays a low load warning. For checking the vibration monitoring function, the handle is pushed down, creating a misalignment between the motor and the pump. This will increase the vibration level. Have you noticed the shape of the threshold curve? The explanation is that vibration depends on speed. The CBM function is unique, because it correlates speed with the vibration level. You will have different vibration thresholds at different speeds, depending on the baseline measurement. This is also useful to find resonances which occur in some applications. The Danfoss CBM solution offers multiple and flexible ways to notify the user about the occurrence of a warning or alarm. We have seen how the notification looks like in the local control panel. The drive can also trigger a digital or relay output when an event occurs. Another possibility is to read the CBM status via field bus through a PLC. It is sufficient to monitor the status word, and, in the event of a notification, additional data can be read about the specific operating conditions. For example, the speed value, motor current or the amplitude of the vibration. It is easy to integrate CBM in an automation system like in this example with a Siemens PLC and HMI with Profinet connection. Yet another possibility is to connect the drive to a cloud solution, such as the Danfoss Drive Pro Remote Monitoring. Dedicated CBM dashboards make visualization easy. In the case of events, the user can also receive email notifications. 
Try out the Danfoss CBM functions and let us know how they work for your application, and what new features you could use.